So today we are reading Shishi Vilapa Kosumanjali, verse number 84. O Devi, Goddess, can I serve your nectarian words with my ears and your comfort-scented smile with my eye. O oh, Devi, Goddess, can I serve your nectarian work with my ears and your comfort-scented smile with my eye? Whether in separation or in meeting, Shiragunata always relishes the stream of Raga Mohana's sweetness. This full transcendental bliss is sometimes relishable in the form of joy and sometimes in the form of anguish. The stream of loving pastimes that constantly flows in the abode that transcends the three modes of material nature can always be experienced in the heart of heart of the most fortunate devotees. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. So it was very short prayer of Raghunath, but very sweet prayer. And we can see here the importance of meditation, of pastimes, and also relishing that pastimes. And the special blessings is infused in this kind of practice. And that is that everyone who is deeply absorbed in the pastimes between Radha and Krishna can transcend the three modes of na material nature. So this is the special blessings, special benefit and power of Lilas. All different pastimes are transcendental. So every devotee who comes in the contact with these pastimes through his meditation, through his mental association, slowly and surely by the blessings and potency of the pastimes will transcend. He will not be influenced with the three modes of material nature. This is very important to understand and to accept and also to practice. Because sometimes there is some doubt can appear in the heart and in the mind of devotee. Am I qualified? to meditate, to practice smarana, lila smarana. And our acharyas are encouraging such devotees. And they're saying, yes, you have to do, if you want to overcome material nature, bodily concepts of life, 
three modes, three gunas, three modes of nature. So devotees who are on the perfect stage of their spiritual life, they are always absorbed in lilas. Gurudev sometimes say, with closed eyes or with open eyes. When we love someone, we always think about him, this person. When we close the eyes, we think about that person. And we have open eyes and doing something else, driving, working, writing, painting, playing something with kids, walking. We always, with open eyes, we are thinking deeply in the heart about that person which we really love. So this love helps, greatly helps in meditation. Without love, it's not possible to have fixed meditation. But when the love is present, meditation on particular person whom we love is spontaneous. So when devotee is attached with, with Radhika, with her maidservants, then he is always thinking, feeling, meditating on them. And they are transcendental personalities, and because they are transcendental personalities, they are helping Sadaka to overcome three gunas of material nature. We should have a faith in this statement. So this is the most effective, most blissful, and we can say most simple way to overcome three gunas of material nature. To meditate on loving pastimes between Radha and Krishna. And Raghunath here in this simple prayer, he is giving us example how he is thinking and feeling about Devi, Shri Radhika, who is so beautiful, so blissful, so playful. He thinks about her with all his heart, not mind, <laughs> with all his heart. He is thinking with the heart. <laughs> And in that way, all his senses are automatically focused on beloved Sh Swamini. All his senses. And he is saying, I want to serve your words, the sound of your voice, sound of your words, the meanings of your words. I want to serve by listening with my ears. So this is the result of deep meditation. And he is continuing, I want to serve you, how? By looking with my eyes, your smile, your beautiful, tender, nice smile. Behind is behind it so much meanings are present behind that smile. So we can see here very clearly what does it mean to serve someone who is on that transcendental position. First, we have to accept 
our transcendental position, our spiritual identity, which is above three gunas of material nature, and then approach with our mind to receive association through our mind and heart of that personality. And the best way how we can serve that personality is to very carefully and tastefully listen his words and look on his face because through the face many emotions of the heart are revealed. So this is the ocean in which Raghunath is always swimming and drowning. Can I share it a bit? It's in the ocean. Oh. So, Goranga Sundaraji was explained very sweetly and nicely. And uh, I, I found out, uh, I think, the same things in Birapak Mandari 94, some explanation. And Baba said, Jiva Gosami and Shirira Baradeva Bilyabhushan said, Bhakti means attachment or constant attraction to God. So, Goranga Sundaraji said, if we love somebody, especially Ishtadeva, and then some attachment there, beautiful face, or beautiful sound of Uncle Bell, or Mahati Bina, whatever. And constant attraction is coming. Then we start meditate something, Actually, any meditation from beginning is okay. Like uh, we try to light the bicycle. I was experienced, you know, from try to ride on bicycle. Bicycle. Cycle. Cycle. Ah, Sorry, bicycle. cycle. Then, you know, from beginning, always fell down, always fell down. And then slowly, slowly, you know, okay, I can lie down a few seconds. Then slowly, slowly, five seconds, 10 seconds. And finally, one minute. So our meditation is, is like uh, this. And this, Anandas Baba was very interesting saying, Sadhana Bhakti ripened into Baba Bhakti, the absorption of the consciousness in Baba turns into Durban Sumriti. So like a Durban Sumriti is about meditation like a movie. So this is kind of riding bicycle. So from beginning for us, like a Nishta stage or maybe Ruchi stage. So our meditation may not continue so much, but we are practicing, practicing. One day, if we attend the Baba Bhakti, then 
ドゥルバンスムリティ、オールリーライズカイングフロー、ライクグルデイ。So this is our very hope. And he say, Baba say, this ドゥルバンスムリティ、オアラティ。Actually, Baba mentioned ドゥルバンスムリティ、and ラティ is equal. Can be gradually attained by a sadaka, by hearing, chanting, and remembering the great loving devotion of the Lord's eternal associates, like r a g u n a t a Das Goswami, like Torasi m a c h a So, this is a very interesting point. So, we should not lose, you know, like、uh, hope. Because if we have hope, one day love is coming, that is coming. Or one day prema is coming, Durba Smriti may come. That's Baba is encouraging us. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Sometimes these visions even appear in the hearts. Of ordinary devotees, like a lightning flash appearing in the sky. Devotional practice, yes.、Mm. Devotional practice is meant to make this blissful experience taste steadily within the heart. When this practice of remembering God ripens, the bird like heart of the devotee will fly up to the planet of bliss. An inexhaustible fountain of sweetness and beauty will then burst out. Before the devotee's eyes. Radhe. So we should repeat again this part of commentary. Please. Sometimes these visions even appear in the hearts of ordinary devotees. Like a lightning flash appearing in the sky. So, this is what Jayanandaji was explaining to us that even ordinary devotee, by the mercy, <coughs> by the Kripa, can receive this lightning flash, Spurtis. And these k i n d of spurtis are spe special blessings and special mercy, special kripa, which he receives from Guru, Vaishnavas, or directly by the mercy of s h r i m a t e Radhika. Ordinary devotee. So, like Jayananda Ji said, we should never lose the hope. We should understand. It, it could happen also to me, and it can happen also to me. Because this hope is nourishing our strength and 
is inspired devotee, ordinary devotee, to continue in his spiritual life. So it is possible, it is possible, that on the ordinary level of devotion, devotee experience some sportis, some lightning flash, very short, mm -hmm. like a blitz, I don't know an English word, but I don't know. And we can see from the lives of saints, we, we are reading Vraj of Saints and uh, mm -hmm. saints of, from Bengal, how sometimes even the great devotees, they receive this lighting flash of Spurti and Radhika or Krishna or Radha and Krishna or Gauranga, they suddenly appear in front of them, but they don't recognize them. When the, finish is, uh, when the vision is finished, then devotees say, oh, what I missed. I didn't recognize them. How is it possible? And then he starts to cry and cry and cry. And this kind of crying is helping him to develop more attachment and more attachment. So, what is my point why I'm talking? Because I'm encouraging myself that maybe sometimes it can happen that some spurtis appear in my heart, in my mind, but maybe I'm not aware of it then. It is normal, practically, because my mind is still absorbed in worldly things, this is his habit, and when some spiritual lights suddenly appearing in the mind, then he is not able to recognize, he is not aware, but his heart is changing. So this is the help of Radhika, Radha Kripa or Guru Kripa, that through these small realizations, short realizations, help Sadaka to grow and to ripen and ripen even more and more. When this prakna, devotional practice is meant to make this blissful experience stay steadily within the heart. This is the point. When these small lightning flesh, flesh appear in the heart and the mind of the devotee, they purify the heart, they melt the heart, and result of this is that devotee is becoming more and more steady, fixed in his devotional life, in his devotional practice. So these hints, these flashes are also present in the words of Acharyas. When we listen, for example, the words, just simple, one-line words of Raghunath, we expose our mind and heart to receive these flashes. And these flashes, what he sees, what he feels, what he touches, 
hears these flashes are coming in our screen of the mind and screen of the heart. So, Shravana, like Maharaj, Janan Maharaj said, this Shravana and Kirtana is so important that through the Shravana, proper hearing, we can receive this Sukritis. That all these impressions and these impressions will start to melt and to change the heart of sadaka. Impressions. The more impressions we have, the more spiritual feelings will appear in the heart. So, Baba is trying to encourage us addressing sadhaka's ordinary devotees. Or sometimes he said neophytes, or sometimes he said aspirants. So be patient and just properly connect your heart with the hearts of Rasik devotees. Then the flow of mercy will just be infused in your heart. And automatically, automatically, visions, small light visions, flesh visions will appear in the screen on the heart and the screen on the mind. So just by reading or listening or meditating on the words of this on this line, simple line in these words. Can I serve your nectarian words with my ears? Immediately, this vision which Raghunath has will appear in the heart of sensitive devotee. So, please, just jump, that we can go in the flow with your sharings. I don't know who is here or there. Ah, I see Sunitiji, Gora Chandra, yeah. Please. Gopinath Payong, so, yeah. Gopinath? Yes, oh. Gopinath Payong, so, oh. Radha Charan, yes, please. Oh, Gopina, yeah, see. When this practice of remembering God ripens, the bird like heart of the devotee will fly up to the planet of bliss. An inexhaustible fountain of sweetness and beauty will then burst out before the devotee's eyes. So this is the result. This is the goal of ordinary devotee. This is the goal of ordinary sadaka that his heart ripen like someone who already on that stage. <coughs> so it is moment when devotee's heart will fly up to the planet of bliss. What is the planet of bliss? Where is this planet? <laughs> Vraja Lok Vraj Aprakata and Prakrata Lil. We are Radha and Krishna. 
always perform their loving pastimes. And this planet first appears in the heart of the sadaka. And there is no difference in these two planets, these two places. The place where Radha Krishna has the loving pastimes and the place in the form of Radhika's and the, in the form of devotee's heart. The heart of devotee is the planet because they devotees always feel and he, meditate and think on their beloved Ishtadev. And they have Ishtadev in the heart. Not anymore Paramatma. They are attached with Radhika. And she is established in the heart of loving devotee. She is strongly with how Baba is saying steadily. Because devotee has attachment. Attachment brings steadiness automatically. Mother is always a, who is always attached to the baby. She has steady lo love for baby. She doesn't have to make any extra endeavor to be steady. She is normally steady because she is attached. She is crazy out of love for her baby. That brings a steadiness. Because sometimes when we speak about different levels of bhakti, we think that things are going in some uh, mathematical uh, way, uh, how it works and uh, levels are going gradually, step by step, years by years. But all these things are going simultaneously and they nourish each other. Uh, Maharaj was reading how Baba increased Rasa and Rasa increased Baba. So attachment increase Nishta and Nishta increase more attachment. The more devotees on the stage of Nishta, of steadiness, he is more attached. The more he is attached, he has more taste and he has more Nishta, steadiness in his heart. So each level is nourishing each other and depends on each other. And when all these levels come together, they burst out, like Maharaj said, in Bhava Bhakti, in all emotions, and appearance of spiritual body, Bhava Deha. All levels, Shraddha must be there, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajan Kriya, Anartanaviti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, when they all come together, they bring like a laser devoted to the next stage of Bhava. And Bhava, brings them to be more attached, to be more steady, to have more taste and more shraddha. So this is the natural process of bhakti, how it works. It doesn't work on a way how sometimes we philosophically think or maybe in the way of yoga. No, bhakti is completely spontaneous. Then sweetness and beauty appears in the heart. Mm -hmm. 
The boundless waves of love that arise in the ocean-like heart of a loving devotee can be somewhat God by hearing the words of a great lover of God. When a living entity experiences this everlasting bliss, he attains his swarupa, his constitutional position. This is the attainment of victory for the Chaitanya Shakti, the potency of transcendental consciousness. This is the attainment of Svarajya, one's own state. Invigorated by Mahabhav, Srila Dasa Goswami relishes such a boundless bliss in both separation and meeting that his verbal expression are merely like a thin line on the swelling flood of the ocean of meeting and separation. The practicing devotee will experience that amount of bliss by adhering to his to this sutra thread or aphorism. So this is the end of this paragraph and it's very clearly said how much intense feelings are present in the heart of Raghunath who is absorbed in his swarup, his own state, his normal position, actually. And what he can do outside just to pronounce some small little words and lines in the form of verses. Because no one can express this kind of realizations, this kind of vispurtis, uh, samadhis, lilas, with his words. And no one can understand only through the words what's going on. So he is giving the hints which are coming in the form of tiny lines of these words. Especially in this one. It's just one line. But this line is so full of his emotions, experiences of Lila, the Tzadaka, who is able to connect his heart with his heart can receive everything what is in the heart of this kind of Rasik devotee. And we should practice this practice by connecting our hearts with our Gurudev's hearts. When we learn how to connect our hearts, not ego, not intellect, with the heart of the, our beloved Gurudev, knowing his, how he said, own state, 
own position, natural position, then we will learn how to be connected in a proper way with such kind of personalities, Rasik devotees like Raghunath, Rupa, and so on and so on. And for that, my personal humble opinion is also important one thing. To be connected in the heart with other devotees who are like-minded devotees. But really through the heart. And then exchange of love with devotees will bring steadiness and more inspiration for exchange of love with Gurudev and then with all other Acharyas. And it will go simultaneously. The more devotee is connected with Gurudev, he will be more connected with his disciples. The more devotee is connected with Raghunath, the more he will be connected with all Parampara line. So all these things are depending on each other, nourishing each other, intensifying each other, and coming together to help ordinary devotee in his, on his path. And it said, aspirant will experience the amount of bliss by adhering to this Shastra. Adhering, what does it mean? Follow these Shastras. Is it it or? I have wrong translation. Adhering to the Shastras. Adhering to the Shastras, following the Shastras, accepting the Shastra means accepting devotees' hearts who wrote that Shastra. We cannot separate the books of Raghunath from personality of Raghunath. We cannot separate the words, writings, books of Ananta Das Babaji from his heart. His heart is expressed in these words. He doesn't have anything else. Goranga Sundaraji, I dearly agree your your idea and your opinion. And uh, I was experience here also. If between the devotees we cooperate, we share, then Gurudev is very pleasing. I'm seeing. And uh, each other kind of association and good relationship is, uh, is uh, feeling is more increasing. Even Kirtan together also feeling is kind of increasing in front of the DT, etc. And also, Gorang Sundaraj was a very good point. <coughs> this book, or words and achara, is, cannot separate. Therefore, my understanding like this, it is said two kinds of Bhagavad. <laughs> Person Bhagavat and Grant Bhagavat, Book Bhagavat. And uh, I was reading Anandas Baba's commentary. So he's saying, if we are not available to associate very advanced devotees, in that case, we should associate with Book of Acharya. 
So that means a child feeling infusing this book, Grant Bhagavan. <coughs> so therefore, even now, physically, Ragnar Das is not with us physically. Or Anantas Baba may not present physically with us. But if we reading their words, we feel it, their presence, especially in Siddha Swaru. So therefore, especially Virapak Manjari itself is great. Still, if we hearing from among the Rashika devotees and sharing among the devotees, then that taste become more tasty. Like uh, Shukadeva was talking Bhagatam. Like uh, ripe fruit is very tasty. But uh, Om touch uh, this ripened fruits become more sweet. So similarly, this Vinapak is very sweet. But if taste with Anandas Bhaji Maharaj become more tasteful. And taste by Guru Dev, and then more tasteful. And Goranga Sundaraj is also tasting, that's also very much tasteful. So I feel, therefore, this among the association and sharing and reading, hearing, sharing, that is, I think, one of the best process of attaining this Raga Bhakti. This is I feel. Radha, Radha. Thank you, Maharaj. So we should see here how Baba is also again and again and again is preparing us for the next step, how to enter in Lila. To enter in Lila means to prepare the heart in the same tune, like a person who is explaining and talking about that, Lila. Then vibration will come in the heart of ordinary devotee. When his heart is prepared. If no one doesn't want to add something. Rade, rade. Yes, please, my dear. Sorry. Ah, 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 <laughs> but, but I only enjoy the remnants of your sharing stories. So, yeah, you support me when I'm speaking lecture sometimes. So I also want to contribute to your sharings, although I don't like to speak so much because I'm really relishing. But we're talking very high level about entering the Leela. That really looks far for us. And 
I remember the story of Narada Muni when he got the darshan of Narayan in the womb of his mother for just a second. So after, there was no Leela, there was only darshan for a small part of a second. But then there was no question anymore of material sense gratification. It was over. He saw something so beautiful he could never again forget. Everything else in the material world is uh, somehow empty, without taste, disgusting. So then there is no question of sarana anymore. You cannot forget. You are so attached. You want to see that beautiful Ishtadev again. Like when the gopis are blaming the Brahma that he make the eyelids, because when they close their eyes for just a second, a minimum of a second, then they cannot see Krishna, then they become upset with that. So I remember all, also Gurudev one time, many years ago, somebody asked him, how are the colors in the spiritual world? And Gurudev, he tried to explain the green <laughs> in the Konja. <laughs> but, he, but he could not explain. He said, it's, it's green, <laughs> but full of feelings. No? You cannot compare with the green that we know in the material. This kind of green is so green, it's real green. So he could not find any words to explain that. And I think what we are trying to do with our sadhana, or so-called sadhana, <coughs> we are just waiting for this one glimpse of something. For this we are praying. That some transcendental smell will come in our meditation, in our japa, or that the glimpse of green from the spiritual world has come, from the kunja. Or that we listening once the ankle bells of Radharani. Then everything material is over. I believe that. If I could just once get a glimpse of something, then I believe that has so much attraction. It captivates our heart so much that we really develop rati, that everything else cannot be compared anymore and that we are become really greedy. So we don't need to think about Leela and everything. I mean, Anantaras Babaji, he is pouring the mercy. <laughs> everything <laughs> what he writes is so sensual. Everything is so fragrant. How he describes everything is so beautiful. It's made to attract all our senses, our ears, our eyes, our nose, our tongue. No, everything is delicious also, the remnants. So, but we only need just a glimpse of something, I believe. Oh, Radhe, for that we are praying. Yeah. 
Thank you, Guru Chandra, for your nice sharing. And these kind of devotees are most fortunate devotees. Baba is writing on the in the beginning of the commentary. This kind of devotees who receive this kripa for this small flesh glimpse, like Gorachanda said, is most fortunate. Not because of their sadhana, so-called sadhana. <laughs> no. And I also agree that our sadhana is actually is preparation, it's a waiting time. And who knows how long it will take. But we should have faith, hope, and also love. And this kind of devotee is most fortunate devotees, persons. Radhe, Radhe, thank you. Can I say something? I would like to say only a few words, if you allow me. I want to say that this one sentence that has really touched something, when Baba is explaining the attainment of the victory for Chaitanya Shakti, I was to come immediately. I was thinking about this verse. The first verse, Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. Mm. And I thought, yeah, this is the, what, whose victory is it? It's uh, Swamini's victory. Mm. She is victorious. She is uh, coming as Gorangi and she takes all, you know, these things away that are not auspicious, that are not her. Full and shifts the like you all said so nicely that we can have a feeling of what is really transcendental and spiritual, and our prayers and our hope for that is also very, very uh, important and ongoing process. And I thought, when I think back some years, how I study or try to understand, you know, who is Chaitanya and. What is uh, my position? What is my relation? Then if I feel it nowadays, there has been some, you know, change. It has been somehow intense, more intensified, like Gurudev say, says, the intensifying of emotions. This, you know, this cooking down, boiling down, getting all the water out, getting all the creamy you know, the creamy prema feelings, whatever they may be in my conditioned state, but there has been, you know, some feelings. And, they, you know, there have been, like, some mm -hmm. feelings that have been growing somehow, even if I don't have a lightning flash all the time, but sometimes it feels like something is coming. <coughs> that is already... Uh, I think this is already something that we all can feel in our lives. There has been like a before and an after somehow. There has been something, even if it's only very little. And in the case of, of course, Raguna Dasko Swami, it is fully uh, blossomed. And he's giving us this inspiration that how he feels when he, he gets this full realizations of Swamini's form, and Rupa Goswami also gets full realizations when he's chanting Mahamantra. We had also yesterday that subject that how to, yeah, to really feel the form and to, to see the hands and to see the face. Yeah. Right now we are only, I am only practicing and I'm praying, I'm hoping for this. And I know also my, my endeavors should always be more and more and more. I can never be satisfied somehow because I always feel I don't do enough or I don't do uh, intense. But when this comes, 
this Param uh, Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. When the victory comes from the Chaitanya Shakti, in Gurudev always says Chaitanya means conscious. Means consciousness is winning over unconsciousness. Means the desire to to serve is winning over the desire to be lazy or crazy or whatever, non-service. <laughs> then, then this comes, then this is happening. And we, even if I don't have so many big flashes in my life, or I don't realize, you know, when the flash has come, like you said, Goranga, still there have been some things where I can see before and after. I can still feel that I am on the right path. I am, you know, endeavoring and the subjects have changed. Now the subject is the mercy of Shimate Radhika and the full understanding what is this, you know, relationship, how to become a Dasi, hearing from Dasis. I never had this before, you know. I never realized that now when Gurudev speak, I am hearing from a Dasi. Before I always think, oh, I'm he hearing from a guru. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing from any teacher. But now I some something has changed. So when I look on, on myself, of course, often I am critical. But to be positive, really, I I need to see also what has changed in my feelings. When I'm reading now, I, I read in a different feeling. And I think that's what Gurudev is talking about, the condensed feelings. It's not only so, always something so extraordinary, but it can happen. It, it has happened also. But I feel for myself, the change of the feelings when I read or when I hear, it's already a big step for myself to feel uh, encouraged that the process is is going on and that the there will be also the Param Vijayati, <laughs> the victory <laughs> for the Chaitanya Shakti, for Shimate Radhika, that she will take us, take me, take all of us. We are helping each other, like you said so nicely, uh, in the realm of bliss, ananda, and service, of course, that will make it possible to go deeper and deeper. So mm. thank you very much. This was so nice. To listen, it's also nice. Everyone has a different feeling, different realization. And that is the beauty of the love and action team that I feel we are here. <laughs> you also want to share something for us? <laughs> 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 So nice to see all of you. <laughs> um, did you did you ever see a Smith a Smith this you know Smith this fire who who make uh, iron hot? Oh, blacksmith. Blacksmith. That. So there is this example when iron comes close to the fire, then uh, it uh, it create the same uh, what is it in English? Uh, um, it, becomes it becomes like fire. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, uh, it, it it is maybe brownish. No, this this iron is brown. If you see it. And the smith put it in the fire. Then slowly it becomes reddish. And later it becomes like yellow. And uh, some sparks coming from this iron becomes very hot. And you cannot say, okay, this is iron and this is fire become, because this quality has become one. And this is the most beautiful example. And there is one one other quality iron uh, become when it's in the fire. It becomes very soft. It was uh, if you see iron, you cannot handle uh, uh, cold iron. But when uh, iron gets the quality of the fire, it becomes soft like water. 
or like very easy to to handle it and in this picture this this is really similar simultaneously to our situation when we are close to our guru dev uh who is uh who have this quality of this fire he it needs some time in the beginning we have we are only a little reddish maybe if we are lucky and then but not soft then the softness Pero no suave there. suave no está and um but if we Pero, if we give enough uh, time si nosotros le damos Guru suficiente Dev tiempo is waiting that we become reddish and then he Entonces, can uh create different forms mm -hmm. especially how how the iron he can see what what is the quality of this part of iron what can i do with this and then it's easy when we when he got this quality of softness he can make the most beautiful things out of this part of iron what we before it was iron and after it, it's a beautiful um i would say a servant after this moving also the form and then we cannot say it is the same than before and the same happened with us we are after the forming of our guru dev we become different our quality changed and even our form changed and we become a beautiful useful form for our swamini Entonces, this is all, always in the mind of our guru dev he will make some useful thing das. from huh? das. dasi for from uh, from us no? so and and maybe there are many different uh uh dasis after all and uh, different uh services but gurudev is the expert who can create this speciality and get the best out of this part of iron what was before no, he knows he is the expert so this is what i can uh what came in my mind today when i listen to all of you this fire is this this is the beauty and we are in, in this fire still <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> da, da, da. thank you so nice so beautiful thank you to both of you it was really great pleasure to listen so this is the proof actually how we are helping each other and here how we are helping each other in to become steady and also more attached and to become more attached to each other on the spiritual level. So in all relationship, attachment is the most important. So when you bring seven, 10, 20 iron roads, which are completely in the flame, and they are melting, you can put them together <laughs> and to make really more fire and more light. <laughs> so thank you very much. Someone wants to? Gopinath, I see yeah. you now. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Baya. Um, I got, I got, I got stuck with one point. Um, we're listening now, and and, and uh, it was about Spurti and how beautifully Goranga Sundar described that um, that in the heart of the ordinary devotee, it can appear, and we know that it can appear to the mercy of of Guru Dev that we can get a flash, uh, or we can maybe get a sense of a of of a, of an image or of a, of a part of a, a lila or as Gora, Gora Chandra said no 
uh, we can <clears throat> feel the green or we can see we can feel a fragrance but still it's a sporty right so I was wondering like how can this sporty become a permanent stage? And and I'm so thankful because Gorosundra just described the process. You know, we have to like our our iron has to become gold by Gurudev is the is the goldsmith who actually will mold it that it becomes permanent. And I one time asked Kesha Baba and also Gurudev about this that like why is it not coming permanently? Why is it not flowing permanently in us? You know, like even if we kind of understand it that this is the transcendental realm, but it's not staying with us. You know, it's again disappearing. Maybe like you know, we, we listen something and we feel so attracted to it, but the next moment it's already gone. And then Kesha Baba was saying, you know, with a smile that. Sporty is one thing, and it can come by the grace of Guru Dev and Radharani, but staying there is another thing. And same question I asked to Guru Dev, and both Keshav and Guru Dev said that it's like waves. Waves come and go, right? One time the wave is high, but then after again it goes slow. So this is our spiritual path, and we should accept it. But when the wave is high, we should ride it. We should know how to ride this wave because that wave will take us a step further, like uh, Laura uh, Sundar was saying, you know, like it, it takes you, or Suniti was saying, you know, that something has changed, right, Suniti Didi? Like it, the feeling has changed, and then the next wave comes and it, it goes again a bit further. I feel again, like, oh, this time, oh, I'm listening, I'm feeling it differently when I listen to Guru Dev or when I listen to the my dear brothers and sisters, or when we listen to uh, Anantaras Bhavaji. So we have to ride this wave, Guru has said, like, because the next wave will bring us closer. So now my uh, thought came, okay, but I actually don't know how to ride. You know, I'm, I'm very bad at surfing. I just know how to fall very good, that I know. So then I thought, okay, I'll just take Guru Dev's wave. You know, I'll just try to ride his wave because my wave is anyway low, my bhakti is low, but his bhav is high. So I just have to actually ride his way. Same goes for when we read Ananta Das Babaji, or I can take Baba's wave, you know, because Baba's is always wave is always high. So I just have to take his way because this is the mercy of the Parampara. This is the mercy of Mahaprabhu that the waves are there. We just have to take the waves. So then also our uh, bhav and feeling will increase through that. So we can actually be very fortunate that even we 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 have no sadhana. I have no sadhana. I have no prema. <coughs> but by the mercy of Gurudev and the Vaishnavas and the rustic devotees, I can actually try to ride with them on that wave. And that will take me a step closer to become really immersed in, in Brahma Bhakti. So I, I don't know, it just was some feeling which, which came up now while listening that uh, how, how, how we can like always increase, how we always can increase the ingredients and the feelings is that we have actually the mercy of our Guru Dev, our Guru Parampara, of the of the Acharyas, that their waves are so high that we can actually, you know, jump on them, and then it will also take us uh, more more deeper and 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 more intensify our spiritual pressures. Thank you. Radhe Radhe, thank you, Gopinaji. Beautiful. I there was a friend of mine. He he is practicing this uh, wave riding uh, and uh, with kiting. There is, uh, uh, I think, one uh, with air. They uh, they have a what's that? Fallschirm. They um, maybe has a Gleitschirm. They they have a board on the line. They have a stick on the on the surfing board, and there's like a wind can uh, guide them also. Paragliding or, or oh, yes, like this. Something, yeah, we know. 
Yes, yes. So they there are there are three. There is the person, there is the water, and there is the wind. And he told me that uh, in the beginning it is like uh, uh, if you learn to drive a car. So you have to think about every step. So now uh, to to uh, how to to put the gear on and how to get, uh, give gas and how to control this. But after some time, uh, it becomes so some kind of automatism. Mm -hmm. And he said that um, after uh, a time, you become one with the with the wave. So you become a relationship to the wave, and it it comes a, it is getting a part of you, and you a part of the wave. So that there is a, a relationship, and uh, Gopinath, this is very uh, simultaneously right to mm -hmm. us if we ride this wave and we do it first time. Okay, it is complicated, and maybe we fell down, but then again we have to try, mm -hmm. and after some uh, uh, practice, we can feel this wave. And maybe we become one of, with this um, with this wave, or we can say with the mood we get from our Guru Dev. Mm -hmm. He is giving the practice how to ride the, the wave. We can copy him like this. He is training us, but after mm -hmm. some time, we become we we, we feel the wave. And we, we go in a relationship with this wave of bath, in our case. Then it becomes a part of us. It's such a nice example, this, from the wave. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. Also, Thank you. Can I say a little bit? And uh, like uh, this playing surfing, and now I'm, you know, bad Muridanga prayer. But uh, I every day try to try to follow Sachinandana Baba. Mm. <laughs> and then interesting is is happening. You know, from beginning nothing, you know, nothing follow. But if we do practice every day, every day, mm. every day, even though I did not know you know personal practice, I just to go arctic, just following, try to follow his his mood, his his way, his bab. And then interesting, slowly, slowly, by the mercy is something happening. Mm. Maybe go plant by also experience, and then slowly, slowly, something you know. Something could follow, mm -hmm. and so therefore, this is I think sadhana. Mm -hmm. So every day we practicing. <laughs> so like uh, this meditation also, we go every day to see Guru Dev. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Guru Dev gives some comment. Sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes <laughs> or understand maybe thirty percent, fifty percent. Then again meditate. Mm -hmm. Then slowly, slowly, this is you know catching more and more. Mm. And also uh, between the kind of among the devotees association helping because because like say I really appreciate Goranga Sundara G's you know explanation mm. because of which I cannot do this. Also, like uh, you know, Gora Sundara also, which I cannot do like like you, because you are Mr. Fix Stai Baba. <laughs> <laughs> and Suniti also, you know, I cannot explain like Prem Bhakti Chandrika so sweetly. I cannot explain like Suniti. Uttabaji is also wow, you know. I I have not kind of love and kind of realization. So each devotee has specific ability or specific feeling. Like sometimes I hear from Gopinathabaya, you know, oh my God, wow, he's such so much deep understanding deep meditation or Gora Chanda also sometimes yeah. oh my god wow you know like this so this 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 is also practicing uh, we are doing sadhana 
Also, uh, Gopinath Bhaiya says, sometimes spirit comes, but cannot continue. Like, I'm feeling like, you know, this is kind of leader, kind of separation and meeting. So if we are dearly greed, mm -hmm. then more feeling coming. Why I cannot see, you know, like kind of more strong feeling coming. Mm -hmm. Then Radhika or Gurudev give more mercy. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, this kind of competition, mm -hmm. doing sadhana, mm -hmm. doing association, mm -hmm. this kind of wave of Radhini Shakti, wave of Rasa is coming. This we need association. That is I feel, you know, every time listening class. Even also, I don't know, you know, I have just, you know, information collector, you know. So I don't know. But uh, so by your mercy, slowly, slowly, I also, you know, slowly, slowly, I may even little bit if advance day by day. Is this fine? One day something happening. And also, I was feeling uh, day before yesterday, we are celebrating, celebrating Paramaguru Dev's appearance day. At that time, I felt, oh my God, Paramaguru Dev is so masculine. Because, you know, sometimes the father, sometimes, you know, a little hard, you know, sometimes very heavy. Because of some responsibility there. Mm -hmm. But grandfather, grandmother mm -hmm. is not like that. Mm -hmm. Full of mercy. Mm -hmm. So I was realizing, oh my God, we should also take shelter, Guru Dev, also mm -hmm. same way. We should pray our Parama Guru Dev. Because always Guru Dev is saying, if you pray Parama Guru Dev, your any desire you can feel. I also believe this. So, like, uh, you know, this is a very nice uh, practice praying, meditating, practicing, even though we are failing, fall down. But again, try to lie down. The, again, this kind of, you know, we can do all our association. Help each other and go each other, go enter together. That is, you know, I think Guru Dev's desire. Radhe Radhe Janaji, thank you, all of you. Radhe Charan, you want to say something? I see your hands are up. <laughs> yeah, actually, he's next to see. Yeah, sometimes yes. I did. No? <laughs> Okay, Jananda just gave us introduction for the next part of reading, and he was speaking how grandfather can be more softer than the father, and we can see here special relationship with Radhika and her grandmother. Mukara. <laughs> so it is very nice to see this special relationship between grandmother and granddaughter. And Manjaris who are witnessing all this Lila, all these talks, and it is very, very, very nice that we can enter also in this, to feel this relationship and to relish this relationship. Radhe, Radhe. Please, Rasamayi. After Tulasi relished Mukara's nectarian word, now she wants to taste the nectar of Radhika's word. <laughs> oh, Radhe, I want to see you smile and hear your nectarian reply to Mukara. 
The nectar of your words is mixed with the camphor of your soothing smile. When will I see and hear you smile and talk at the same time? Someone who drinks water mixed with camphor pleases both his nose and his tongue. Similarly, both my eyes and my ears will understand your words. The face is the index of the mind. Those words that are not revealed through the heart are revealed through a smile. What to do? I cannot resist. <laughs> <laughs> So beautifully is explained this subtle emotional relationship between Radhika and her maidservant. In this very conflict situation, when Mukara saw the signs on Radhika's body, I, I think some uh, garment from Krishna, he, she saw that. And she was very doubtful, auspicious, suspicious. And she was talking, asking Radhika, What's, what is this? Is it Krishna's garment on your beautiful body, my lovely granddaughter? And now, Tulasi who is witnessing this. She wants to relish Radhika's words through her smile. So this is unique words which Radhika is expressing through her smile. And Baba is giving beautiful explanation and says the face is index of the mind so everything can be visible on the face the state of the mind can be visible on the face when the mind is morose the face is little bit blackish it's also all the movements, gestures on the face, and the color of the face is a little gray. And experts of this can easily understand the state of mind of each person. Very expertly. Because the color of the face is showing the state of mind. Mm. <clears throat> but also, the state of heart can be visible in the eyes. When the eyes is so much in love, uh, sorry, the heart is so much in love, I'm sorry my broken English is useless, then this state of heart which is melting out of love is so clearly visible in the eyes of person. So much light appears in the eyes of such kind of person. Because the heart is burning of the light, of the love, and automatically light bursts out from the eyes. And the face also is so bright. So sometimes... Ragunath is addressing Radhika, oh Sumuke, girl, with the face, which is brightening face, out of love, out of sudden meeting, 
So, to enter in Manjari Bhav, we should tune our hearts with the hearts of sensitive devotees. And this art, because this is really art of feeling, we can learn from them because it can be infused in our hearts. And Raghunath is an example of someone in whose hearts all Radhika's emotions are infused. And because of that, he is drinking with the ears her words and also he is relishing and hear the smile of Radhika, hear the smile of Radhika, because he knows what is behind. We will not speak now, but he knows what is behind this smile. And behind this smile is all Radhika's expression, just behind this tender, soft smile of Srimati Radhika. And for us, ordinary devotees, it's so important to tune our hearts with him because we will also understand this hidden language of the heart. Because the eyes are talking this kind of hidden language. And this is parak, especially in Parakya Bhava is prominent. And there is no sadhana, how we can learn this art of listening, seeing, relishing, no sadhana. How to hear the smile of Radhika. There is no sadhana for that. Only by the causeless ahaituk mercy of Guru, Guru Manjari, and all Radha Dasi, Yanu Dasi, Yanu Dasi, Yanu Dasi. Anyway, many things can be said, but I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have one one uh, technical uh, question on this point. This grandmother, Radhika's grandmother, I I just asked Suniti. Normally, the uh, the, the when in India in India, uh, when there is a a woman is married. She entered the house of of the husband, right? And now this question came to me: What is is it uh, the uh, Radhika's grandmother, or is it the mother of the mother-in-law? Because what what would the, her mm, natural grandmother do in the house of the mother-in-law? As I. As I know, and maybe someone knows more about that, actually Mukara is coming to visit Radhika in her home of uh -huh. her family-in-law. Uh -huh. Because like a grandmother, you know, she's very eager to see her granddaughter. <laughs> and the problem was because she, she suddenly came. Uh -huh. No one expected her. <laughs> so Manjaris couldn't prepare Radhika. Oh, yeah, yeah. For her visit. So <laughs> Mukara, grandmother, catch her granddaughter on the spot. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, catch yes. Ah, uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You understand? But the beauty is that actually Mukara, she knows. Mm -hmm. the secrets of yeah. Radhika's heart. And she knows that 
very often she's running away. She knows in the heart she is very favorable to her granddaughter because yeah, yeah. this is the rasa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Vatsalya rasa, which M Mukara has with Radhika, and she is like a grandmother. She is always favorable. It doesn't matter yeah. what granddaughter is doing. She is always favorable, but mm -hmm. she doesn't want to say openly. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not proper rasa. Yeah. But she is using these words. Oh, Rade, what's going on? What's happened to you? Because she is taking care about her yeah. to quickly remove this Krishna's <laughs> garments. God, yes. That no one else can see. But wow. she doesn't say, oh, I know that you have been with Krishna. No, this is wow. not Vatsalya Moot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. It makes it more <laughs> juicy. My God. Yeah, that's more <laughs> juicy. That's the point. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much. Super. Also, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, you know, you know, like, uh, say, father, mother, they they only see the child is kind of dear Basarevasa. But the grandfather, grandmother is a little bit different, little to distance there. So therefore they also desire to meet Radha and Mohan. But uh, they, you know, a kind of Indian culture and you know Eastern culture, they don't say directly. And uh, he, his, you know, her Mukara's rasa is very kind of sometimes opposite, sometimes very favorable, and mixing. So this is especially Indian way. You know, sometimes say say something, but the indicate different way. So which Goranga Sundara she say, you know, this is very interesting. Also, this pastime is actually two bajo. One is Mukara Bajan, one is Jatira Bajan also. Mm. So therefore, Gorang Sundar, you say, visiting. See, always care. So, yes. So actually, Gorang Sundar, you so nicely said, uh, Mukara actually knows the secrets. Grandmother knows what's going on. But she loves so much to see her granddaughter in this situation first and she comes also to externally looks like she's coming to expose her because she comes as a surprise but internally she comes to save her right from the situation from the in-laws that the in-laws won't find out as you said Garanga Sundar so she has a very beautiful role in the Leela actually but she creates this very atmosphere where again the manjaris are required no immediately to to change the the garments to tell mukara oh you're blinded you're old lady you're just seeing the sunlight you know that's making your eyes yellow right so she she again gives the opportunity for the manjaris also so we are very thankful to mukara for this leela know that she always comes as a surprise but inside she actually comes also to save her granddaughter from more troubles <laughs> so nice. this is the reason why uh ragunath is praying to mukara in vraja vilastav he's praying to mukara all words uh, I don't know, I cannot repeat, but I know that he's directing his prayer to Mukara. Mm -hmm. So wow. uh, he is glorifying her, but he knows in which mood she is. And uh, like Gopinath said, and he uh, has experienced how this lady is helping Manjaris in their seva. <laughs> so beautiful, unbelievable. And what I think is, it's not only helping the Manjuris in their seva, it's also increasing the love of the Manjuris, because the Manjuris can feel with Radhika, and Radhika's heart 
Uh, the love in her heart is increasing because of, of her grandma. She is so in love with her, and the mandarins can taste this love. Mm. Mm. One more point. One wow. more point is uh, when I listen that, then um, I can imagine that when a person like Radhika is leaving uh, the uh, the home how much pain must be in those who are stay there who cannot go with her so this is uh, too much separation and i think this is also one point we have to see in this when i watch it like Guranga Sonara said, no, when she will, she is so much missing her. Because if you have such a beauty in your family, you will, you will miss her every moment. And that we also can uh, remember this feeling of uh, missing Radhika. So maybe we also have to um, to take her exam uh, example. If uh, Radhika is not here where we live, we have to go to her place where she is. Oh, so we have to. <laughs> we also have to go for Vrindavan to meet her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just one more sure, thing. I, I just felt now that what Rasheshwar was saying that that moment increases again the feelings. And I was thinking, like, there's no moment for the manjari to rest. Actually, you know, the night, the night lila is over. They come home. They just want to relax a little bit, you know, like has been an intense seva night and then the grandmother appears, you know, again alert, you know. So there is like Guru said 24-7, no, like it's again a meditation, like never to rest. You know? No, no, no. And every moment there is a chance to so serve have, and yes, no? every moment we have to see like this. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Now, Arti Seva. Jananaji is going for yeah. this Redanga Seva. I want to share one more thing. Uh, so, I never listen that Mukara is visiting Radharani in Yavat. Possible, I don't know. But I know that every year Radhika is going home to Varshana from Yava for one month. I think also in the late spring or early summer season. It is also like a great festival. Every year she is going home to Varshana to visit her home and her mother and father and living there in Varshana again for one month around. I listened that. And that is for Radhika. It's such a beautiful time because she can go out of the control of Jatila and Kutila. In Varshana again, she can feel home and she can uh, meet Krishna more easy. She is little out of control from Jatila and Kutila. So maybe the Leela happens then when Mukara entered, but also possible, of course, that she is visiting her in Java. <clears throat> so, and then I wanted to say something. It is said that the eyes are the windows to the soul, we say like this. No? Through the eyes, you can see the heart or soul. Goranga Sunda explains so nice. And 
once I had a quite shocking experience. I went from Vrindavan once I went to Sri Lanka because of getting new visa. And I met some Buddhist monks, especially one Buddhist monk. And when I met him, little talking, I noticed his eyes. So they were very pure and deep, but empty. Like looking like into the nirvana, <laughs> the nothing. <laughs> so it was really shock, little shocking. I was really surprised because the eyes of the bhaktas, they're always shining. No? There's so much feelings in the eyes. You see Gurudev sometimes when he is in ecstasy, his eyes was full of emotion. But I, I see this Buddhist monk watching in his eyes, very deep, very pure, clear, but you can see emptiness is there. It was really sh little shocking experience to see that. Maybe you also can, if you meet some Buddhist monks, they practice it many, many years, maybe you also can see that. So, the bhaktas are different. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Such a living example <laughs> from the life. Yes. Life and love are coming together. When there is no love, there is no life. Only love can bring a life. And it's visible on the face, in the eyes, in the words in all appearance of person. Love can be visible. And every one of us has his own experience, I think, that we, when, when we have been in love, especially first love, then all our aura is lightening. And elder people, they immediately understand what's going on and say, are you in love? Mm. <laughs> because it's visible in the eyes, in the face, in the movements, gestures, even in the talks, because they have experience. Are you in love? Oh, don't speak with him. He's in love, you know. He's not <laughs> normally. <laughs> so... And it's completely, like Gora Chandra said, it's completely opposite of someone who is lifeless, who doesn't have a life, because he doesn't have a love in his heart. Two o'clock. I'm very happy that devotees have been so inspired to share. It was really very nice. I think that we catch the main points and the rest we can meditate or read so that we can go deeper in this subject, which is so sweet and brings completely a little bit different angle of approach to our meditation. Mm. Yeah, because it's it's turning the rasa from different perspectives. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Rasa Radhe, Radhe. I'm sorry, you wanted to Radhe, Radhe. read you. more? <laughs> no, I'm so happy to listen. Very happy.